Hello. Hi, hi. This is a very exciting day, and it's been an exciting week. Yeah. Uh, here with Barrett Jones, Foo Fighters, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Metallica, who else? Okay, no Metallica. No Metallica? Okay. Presidents of the United States of America. That's right. Melvins, Pussy Galore. Fall yeah. of Troy. <laughs> yeah, right. we were listening to the, the Fall of Troy last Fall of night. Troy. That was pretty awesome. I am the Avalanche. Yeah. So you have been around, and that's it's so cool. So let me talk a little bit about how this got started, or how we decided to do this. Blake, over here. Hi, Blake. How's everyone doing? <laughs> has been following my channel for a while, and uh, he's been we've been working on a, a student-teacher basis for a little bit, and he had mentioned that he wanted to uh, work on a new album. I thought, hmm, wouldn't it be cool to have him out and we could I could coach him through some vocal things that would help his performances on his latest album. And then he'd mentioned that he was working with Barrett. I thought, oh man, we, we gotta get the three of us in a room and we can learn from you on a, a vocal production and songwriting and arranging and level. We can do some vocal coaching and we can show everybody what's happening along the way. And so that's what this event is about. But it's also what uh, a, we're, we're doing a course. So they're out here. Yeah. Not only are we tracking new material for Blake's album, but we're doing a vocal coaching and production course. You get to learn some of the techniques that I've done and a lot of techniques that Barrett has honed throughout the years, working with some amazing vocalists and some not so amazing vocalists, really. Um, so we're gonna be taking questions and we're gonna be actually tracking some background vocals over, we, we worked on uh, the lead vocals for a song, Fallout of Blake's yeah. uh, yesterday. And so we're going to be doing some background vocals over the verse. We've just got a little section that we're going to be doing and, and dialoguing. But we're going to be taking lots of questions, interacting with you guys. Uh, and then I also wanted to give you guys a chance to join the waiting list for the course that we're working on, which will be out uh, in a couple months. Here's the link. You can, you can follow that link and uh, it takes you to a page and to your email and you'll be notified when this course is available. And like I said, this course is featuring Barrett Jones producing, me vocal coaching and producing a little bit, and the songwriting and artistry of Blake McLean, who's got an incredible channel. Um, a lot of you who are watching probably already are familiar with Blake's channel. Hope so. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, be sure to search him on YouTube and, and uh, follow him if you haven't yet. Fantastic artist, fantastic songwriter, fantastic producer. And he has lots of great insights into all sorts of new music and old music alike. So uh, I'm going to comb the questions here for a minute. But we did have one that someone posted right before that I think was mainly aimed at you, Barrett. Um, I don't know. And that was, is there... Is there anything that's kept you going and, and kept you from giving up over the years? There, maybe there's one thing or a couple things. Um, you know, you've been through highs and lows in your career, just like everybody. What, what keeps you going? Um, I mean, that's a good question. It's sort of just, uh, I mean, when I decided in my teens that I wanted to do music, I, it was unwavering. I mean, it's, and I've, you know, I've, I love playing music. I've got into recording just so I could continue playing and so I could pay for equipment to record myself. Um, for me, the real joy is the creation and being a part of creating music. Um, and that's always just basically overwhelmed and dictated everything I do with my life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, what would you say to that, Blake? Honestly, for me, it's just been, you can always get better. 
at whatever you're doing, there's always a threshold that you can pass. And as long as you learn something new and you kind of push yourself past that, you're going to continue to grow as a person and in your career and in everything that you do. You know, so that's always kind of kept me from really, you know, giving up on things or just setting them aside and waiting until later. You know, you can always push past that no matter what. And then the results are incredible every time. Yeah. And I would, I would add, um, based on this next question, how do you go from being uh, a dreamer to a doer? And man, I was a dreamer for a long time. Um, and really, I, and I still dream. I, yeah, I should, well, I should that's say, what I'm yeah. saying there's not much of yeah. a difference between a dreamer and a doer. No, you're, there's really not. You're still dreaming while you're doing. Yeah, and and I and I think that there's this there's this aspect where I get done doing for the day, and then the rest of my day is spent dreaming about what I could do, the next days or or whatever. Yeah. But for a long time, I was I was just a dreamer, where you know I would lay awake at night or I'd sit in my chair, and I'd be thinking about what I should do or what I could do or what someone else is doing that I wish I was doing. And, you know, it, it didn't really change for me. And it really, uh, it was, it was one of those things where I, I was, I, I needed to quit the employment that I had. I needed to quit my job and force myself into a position where I needed to do what I'd always wanted to do. So I had to put myself in I had to get rid of the comfort band-aid. I yeah. And and make that make what I was going to do what I was going to do. Uh that's how I transitioned. And I I, I would imagine I mean Blake you have a, a similar I mean you dropped out of law school. Yeah, I left law school for this. You know, my thing with that like my answer to that would honestly be commitment and habit are the two most important factors. Everybody has that little voice in the back of your head that is telling you what to do, and you know exactly what you need to do to, to get to the point that you want to be and transition from being a dreamer into you know, actual commitment you know, and, and doing something in your life that you really want. And you just kind of have to, like you said, rip off that Band-Aid and just do it and stick with it and see where it goes. If you fail, you fail. You, know, you learn from failure. That's how people grow. Yeah, yeah. Just the old Nike saying, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> well, and, and do it. Barrett, you got started with, with things at such a young age. I mean, you were working with, with Dave Grohl at like age 17, right? I mean, yeah. so there really wasn't for you this, oh, I got to quit working my day job, and, or was there? Uh, not really. I mean, I, so I... I started rec my recording studio officially when I was 18 um, in my parents' house. Uh, and that's where the name Laundry Room Studio came from. The control room was yeah. part of the laundry room. Nice. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, my first job, I mean, I was working. I, I was barely working there. I was still just out of high school, basically. And... Um, one of the first bands that came to record was Dave Grohl's first band called Freak Baby. First, like, non-cover cover band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, when he, and he was 14 at the time, <laughs> playing guitar. Um, but, yeah, I mean, then when I started, you know, by the time I was 20, I actually started bartending at 20, and I only had to work two days a week, and so I was basically already doing full-time music. I was in a band and recording then. And um, by the time I moved to Seattle when I was 25, um, I worked, I mean, besides touring with Nirvana for two years, I was the drum tech yeah. for them. And when we weren't on tour, uh, I was running sound at uh, Rock Candy, which was a club there, a big club. Uh huh. And that was just a couple days a week too. And then I started... I, I quit that and started doing the studio full time around 26, 27. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Well, let's um keep the questions and comments coming, guys. Um, we're going to start doing a little bit of background vocal tracking. You'll get a, a sense of this song. And the, the course that we are doing features lessons 
around preparing your voice for recording, around how to listen and take direction from producers, how to listen to your own voice and how to be your own producer. Uh, and it features this music. So not only do you get lessons that give you practical ways to think and practical things to try, but you get to see these things carried out in an actionable way while we're actually creating real music. And so this is one of the songs and you'll get to see a full breakdown and a full recording session of this uh, within the course. But this is one of the songs we're working on the, what is it, first verse? Second verse. Second verse, we're working on the second verse, working on uh, adding some ad-libs and doubles and harmonies and stuff like that or whatever it needs. We don't yeah. really know. We're, we're just figuring it out going, right now. Going in cold. And just a comment, you know, it's really cool. The course, it's going to show you that it's not all just smoke and mirrors. You know what I mean? Like nothing is ever perfect. And you're going to see, you know, me fail and them tell me to do things and then succeed and like, you know, continue to, to work at it. And you'll kind of understand a little bit more how much of a, a struggle the whole recording process is and it, it's pretty cool yeah yeah so yeah we're we're excited to show you this struggle uh so let's uh let's just get into it a little bit here yeah Setting up the tracks here. Setting up the tracks. So you have like um, the that, try the octave that we you were doing before. Okay. And, and get really close up. Just and right up yeah, to the just mic. Okay. Right up, and because it's a very whispery. Yeah. Sound. So. Do you want me to kind of like come in and out of them, like not sing exactly what I was singing, or do you want me to sing like spot on on top of all the words? Yeah. Spot yeah. on. Okay. <clears throat> The huntress will chase her prey yeah, she'll Steal another heart just to throw it away She won't stay, that's her game For God's sakes, baby, promise me I'm not just a name You left me living in the after I gotta give it just a little bit more there on those because I was kind of falling in and out of them. Um, They they sounded good, though. They do sound I, good? Yeah, they, they were good. I would say just, to, yeah... I mean, are you like really up? I was, yeah, I was really up close, but like I was doing it a little quiet. So like I was kind of falling in and out of the words a little bit because it wasn't enough air. Yeah. Well, more of that like sneaky guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 In the in the yeah, like yeah. Like just yeah. a really kind of. Yeah. The huntress will chase her prey. Steal another heart just to throw it away She won't stay, that's her game For God's sakes, baby, promise me I'm not just a name You left me living in the after Yeah, that was a nice one Cool uh, Give me one more Okay The huntress will chase her prey Steal another heart just to throw it away She won't stay, that's her game For God's sakes, baby, promise me I'm not just a name You left me live uh, Cool, I mean, I think we have that Easy Yeah Do you want to do any on the first verse? Uh, no, I think the first verse should stay the way it is And have the, have the lift for the second verse Okay, what about, um, like, um, we could always do a whisper I know we talked about that a little bit, too Oh, that'd be fun to try. Yeah, yeah, we can try that. It's gonna be so weird. <laughs> and we also talked about like the like, whisper versus the versus like the sort of muttering in the back. I mean, maybe yeah. see how both of those sound. Over yeah, like parts. the really like low. She left me living in the afternoon. Yeah, like that kind of a thing. But it, and and it's the thing is is it's not like all of these are gonna be used in all places either. Like no. yeah, yeah. And one of the things that I was learning a lot about the way that that you work is you you end up kind of collecting yeah. ideas and and almost over overdo things in terms even for the lead vocal I mean you'll have a lot of different options and then you'll go back and comp things later correct 
uh, which is very different than than I who who does a lot of self producing. Like I just sing it till I get it right and and won't have any comps. Um, but it was neat to see you work yeah. that way. And it's also cool in an arrangement setting, like over collecting ideas. And then when you go to mix, like, oh, yeah, we'll bring in the muttering. Oh, we'll bring in the whispering. Oh, well, <laughs> so you're you're making those decisions more based on arrangement and mix later, uh, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I would clarify that if you're self-producing, then you also know more when you've got it right and stuff. And usually when I'm working with a with a singer it's it's more efficient to actually just have them do it a bunch and then i can and go you and, make the and make the later. decisions yeah yeah because you know it can take a lot of um it can take a lot of time you don't you don't want to burn the singer out by like trying to get into the minutia you want yeah. you want to let them expand on their feeling for the song so. yeah yeah that's a really good point all right um Try a few more ideas. All right. You want to do the whisper one first or yeah. the low one? Let's do the whisper. Okay. Do you want me to just like speak it almost? And and maybe not the beginning of that first verse. Do the second half. Okay. You reap what you sow. You know. And I'm the reaper here to tailor your clothes. Because all of your woes. Are your own, no, no You can't be blaming everybody When you did this alone You said Ooh. I didn't really hear it oh, I, heard, I heard little tiny mutterings yeah. of it. I can come forward just a little bit more yeah. with be, be, be sneakier Yeah, sneakier Sneakier? Alright yeah. The sneaky, what, what did we say yesterday when we were doing the the um, you you want to be that the it's guy like who, the reaper the like grim the... reaper guy who crawls out from the bed and he's like but right so... <laughs> like that kind of a... he's like right there on, yeah. like I'm right here and you didn't even know I was gonna be here yeah and almost make it sound like the ghost adventures sound that they all kind of yeah. oh my god what was that what was yeah. that yeah yeah, yeah. but you so... and actually this time try to just go ahead and do the whole verse we'll, okay you know we might pick and choose some of it cool and. Don't feel like you have to do exactly what you did on the lead vocal. You can have some maybe whispery stuff it. in between them. Okay. The words. I'll mess around. Ooh, that's kind of good. You reap what you sow, you know. And I'm the reaper here to tailor your clothes. Because all of your woes. Are your own, no, no You can't be blaming everybody When you did this alone You say you there's a, You're doubling that, that lead vocal A little bit, right? No No? Oh, there's some, like, extra Oh, Yeah, actually, the double is on That shouldn't be on <laughs> Ah, okay, yeah, we'll hear it again <laughs> That one's, yeah That was pretty cool Yeah I, Try experimenting with the in between stuff. Okay. Ghost, ghostly. Just very ghostly. You reap what you sow, you know. And I'm the reaper here to tailor your clothes. Cause all of your woes are your own. No, no. You can't be blaming everybody when you did this alone. You said. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah, the little call and response is there. Yeah, do one more like that. You reap what you sow, you know. And I'm the reaper here to tailor your clothes. Cause all of your woes are your own, no, no. You can't be blaming everybody when you did this alone. You say you owe me. Cool. Blake, um, we have a question uh, that we can both answer a little bit here. Uh, and then I wanted to give you a chance to talk a little bit about how these songs were, were recorded and, and conceived. Okay. But the question is, how do you avoid blowing out your voice when you're recording on the clock? Right? Like when you, you're, you're here for a week and you have to be on and because we're you know you flew out here and um 
and there's just not an option to not sing. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, there's this this pacing that has to happen um, where we, we need to capture the best of your voice. And I think part of that, uh, we you know, is the vocal comping, right? And, and giving him a chance to to sing not too much. We sing until until Barrett has yeah. said, I think we got what we need, and then we move on. And he's keeping this this list, uh, mental list in his mind and listening very intently and, and being that sounding board, which is, I think having a producer really helps you not burn out your voice. Mm-hmm. Um, I think also having uh, proper warm-ups, focusing on things like character and connecting with the lyrics. These are some things that we talk about in the course. Mm-hmm help you because you're not you're not entering into a competition with your own voice you you are entering into a relationship with your voice based on the emotions that you feel i think that's all part of it but um and that's stuff that we talk way more about and we actually workshop in the course um but what are some things that you do blake when you're when you're on the clock what what is your mindset how are you thinking i mean honestly being here has helped me a lot um yesterday we sang pretty much all day you know, and having Chris here to kind of help me technique wise, because technique is so important, you know, and sometimes mine's not the best, you know, sometimes I'll push a little hard in some places and things like that. And the strain starts to get to you, but it's a balance between the two and finding that balance, I think is the most important thing, you know, and, and knowing what parts to do first, if you're recording, knowing what parts to do first, you know, and what parts to do last because of where your voice is going to be, that kind of a thing. So it's just, it's a lot of planning. And it's a lot of just being sort of meticulous with your voice and paying attention to it and knowing the signs, you know, knowing when you're starting to get a little worn out. You know, I know they were even looking at me yesterday and Barrett was like, are you okay? Like, is your voice fine? And I was like, I swear it's fine. Like, I felt great. I was just putting a lot of grit into it, you know. So, um, yeah, it's just knowing your own voice and knowing your own body a little bit. And that kind of gets you to where you need to be. Yeah, you you can usually tell when a voice starts to fry out. Yeah, yeah. well, we reached that point yesterday, yeah. right, where uh, we we had gotten mostly done with the lead vocals, and we came back after dinner, and we were gonna do a little bit of we we're gonna try to finish the chorus on one of these, and and it was like we we had a few takes, and both you know yeah. Barrett and I looked at each other, and went yeah. he's fried, <laughs> and they looked at me, and I was like, yeah, I'm fried, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, so it was it wasn't one of those things where like. Blake wanted to keep going and we were like, no, you suck. Or, you know, it's like, it's all very, very mutual and positive, which is, which is really neat. The other thing that, that I was thinking about too, is you as a songwriter, Blake, you're writing things that both stretch you vocally, but that you are also comfortable enough to deliver. uh, And that helps you not blow your voice out. Uh, also, because you've sung these, you've practiced these. So that's a huge part. You're writing to showcase the strengths in your voice, which is so huge. Absolutely. And actually, so some of these songs, you know, I took a little bit of a different approach to writing some of these um, than I have in the past, where like, for example, I would, you know, there's there's different arrangements in songs and like a lot of times they're for different types of singers. So like two of them don't have this huge chorus that you go to that you have to hold out a high note and and go crazy one of them does but um two of them don't actually three of them don't and essentially what the way that that works is you have like a verse and then you almost have a pre-chorus with a little ending bit on it and that kind of acts like the hook itself and then you go into an instrumental you know there's a lot of songs out there that do it look at john mayer slow dancing in a burning room that's a really good example of it. And it builds, 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 falls into instrumental. And you kind of let that take it. And so it doesn't put so much wear and tear on your vocal either. So yeah, a lot of it is about the writing and how you, you know, how you carve everything out. And again, just knowing your own voice, knowing what you can do and knowing what you can't do. And sometimes it is good to push yourself a little bit. I mean, I've definitely pushed myself on some of these um, in a couple different ways, but not so much that I feel like I can't accomplish it or do it live or you know, actually feel comfortable with it. And one of the things that has been a struggle oh, for you, oh, one of the things that's been a struggle for you is on, on these choruses, uh, pitch. Like you, yeah. you wouldn't consider yourself to be a pitchy singer and I wouldn't consider you to be that way at all. But talk about your, your relationship with, with this song and pitch. Mm-hmm. And then we talked a little bit about how, using auto-tune as a crutch mm-hmm. 
uh, you, you've kind of learned that in the, so far in this. A little bit, yeah. So for me, like, I've always kind of, you know, I'll track the vocals and I'll, I won't track them with tune you know, but I'll have my headphones in and I'll go through and a lot of times I would comp my vocals like we're doing right now. I would comp the vocals just based on emotion and feeling and then I'd kind of fix them afterwards a little bit, you know, and pull up the little parts that need to be pulled. Most of the time it wasn't a lot, you know, it was just little things, but I always look for performance on top of everything. But the downside to that is when you get in the studio with someone like Barrett who like doesn't use any kind of tune at all and he's like, no, 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 you gotta be spot on. You know, you learn that that essentially like for the good like a good delivery in a song you have to have both you know and when yeah. you don't use the tune and you actually end up on the right notes and everything sounds really good and you're still delivering the same amount of emotion it's like it's like everything comes together and it's 10 times better than it would be if you just got the emotion out of it and fixed it you know yeah yeah that's uh I think that's that's important for every singer to to realize mm -hmm. is that um, if you can if you can not use tuning, tuning is the absolute last resort. Yes, I mean, and it shouldn't even be brought into the picture until you're mixing and you like just can't deal with something. Be, because you're you're wanting it when you're in the in the heat of tracking, pull, it push that singer as hard as you possibly can to get pitch to get expression to get the right take yeah. and and timing and all those things you know don't don't just move things around get it right yeah. and then the the editing and stuff afterward becomes a sweetening rather than a turd polishing <laughs> um yeah. and which is so easy to do in in modern production today you've got that the the turd polishing is is just nuts terrible people definitely lean on it too much and not just vocals all all the instruments, drums. I mean, everything has to be locked to a grid nowadays. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I was talking about the, the Fall of Troy record that we did in ten days with, uh, you yeah. know, no click tracks or anything. An amazing band, yeah. amazing musicians, but their timing was all over the place mm -hmm. by by nature of the songs. But yeah, um, you know, that's just people don't do that nowadays. No. No, you would never have an album like the like that album yeah. that you showed me last night uh, with, today because it's not perfect enough. But it's it's ex it's the expression and the raw energy is yeah. also not something you would hear today because the the pursuit of uh, what some people would consider perfection yeah. is not not there. And even the the definition of perfection, like what yeah. good, perfect, what you know. <laughs> um, we have a, a comment I, which I thought was kind of cool here. Um, from uh, Virginis. Oh, by the way, Blake, your dad's in the chat. Of course he is. <laughs> um, I hope the men in this video are enjoying their studio time. Fingers crossed for a fruitful endeavor. But at the end of the day, if it's not, it's about the journey, not the destination. And that's a, a really great thing to say. Thank you so much for that comment. And it is absolutely the vision you have to have in the studio. You have to just love what you're doing and and get into it for the sake of the music for the mm -hmm. sake of the relationships and and not worry about the outcome i think that that goes for any art if you can't immerse oh. yourself in the creation process yeah then you shouldn't be doing it anyway and you're definitely not going to do art for for the money uh it it doesn't <laughs> uh, history has shown us that artists in general i mean there's a reason the term starving artist exists there's definitely people who are able to, you know, break through that and be really, you know, uber. I mean, Dave Grohl's one of those guys, right? I mean, he's he's been just an incredible success. Happy birthday, Dave! By the way, yeah, oh, it's Dave's birthday. Yeah. Nice, that's <laughs> Happy awesome. birthday, Dave! <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a what a cool uh, cool timing for the event. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So thank you for that comment. Um. Was that my dad that commented that one, or was that? I d it didn't say. Oh, okay. It sounded uh, like something you would say. So. It's a Virginis Maximus was the... Ah, never mind then. Uh, let's <laughs> see here. What's the recording rig like? Uh, we, we cover in detail what the recording rig's like in the course, um, but we can go through it just a little bit. Uh, we're using a... Blake is singing through a Mojave MA200. That is the... It's the old version of it. 
and it's great. Uh, it has a tube transformer. Um, that is going into my uh, stock, or, well, not stock, my Manly Core reference channel strip. And we chose that preamp because of the way that you usually work, which is dual compression on the way in if you can. Right. And uh, so the importance of that is, is we're, and again, we show this in, in much more detail in the course, we're trying to tame the waveforms so that we get good looking and good feeling sound before we even get to the DAW. And maybe you can speak a little bit more to how that affects performances and all that. Well, it's more how it affects, I mean, it does affect the performance a little bit, but it's more about how it affects the mixing of okay. stuff. You just want everything. There's less to do later. Well, it just stands out more. Okay. It, it cuts through a mix better. Um, when you have huge peaks and then little um, body, then it's it doesn't cut through at all. All you yeah. hear is the ah! the sibilances uh -huh. and and the peas, and you don't hear the notes. So and there's something about doing it on the way in that makes a lot of difference. Along oh, yeah. the way in with hardware, you you should always try to get the sound you want going in. Don't don't just you know get the direct signal of your guitar and then i mean everyone does this now yeah well but, but with, <laughs> with vocals especially right yeah. like it's no you you want things to sound correct going in i mean that's i'm old school obviously i started with tape and you want it to sound good going in yeah and then you yeah tweak things at the end so the rest of the signal chain so we have the manly which is a hardware analog tube thing um and then uh we're going into an apogee ensemble thunderbolt recording interface, which serves as the A to D converter. And then we're going into Pro Tools. good old Pro Tools. And <laughs> man, there's lots of DAWs out there. It's kind of funny because Blake um, had done uh, this stuff in, he did all the writing and, and producing in Logic. And, you know, I'm, I'm a Logic user too. You're a Logic I'm user, some. New, new to Logic, um, but starting. And there's a lot of great things about Logic. I mean, there's, Logic from a composition standpoint and um, all the virtual instruments that it yeah. comes with. And I mean, it's just, it's an amazing platform and it does so many things so well. Uh, but when it comes to recording vocals and uh, recording you know, an anything live, analog, yeah, recording <laughs> anything live, there's workflows and editing things that part of it is just that, you know, you especially, but you and I have been using it since the, it was sound tools or sound toys or whatever right. it was called back in the day. And sound it, designer too. Sound designer oh too. Gosh. That's that's what we're used to, and so we're used to that that workflow and how things how things work, and that's why we're we're doing that. And that's going into an iMac. It's a pretty old iMac, but that's the that's the basic signal chain. Funny funny story. My first band ever, a cover band called the Survivors, when I was fifteen. The keyboard player in that band was one of the first engineers that wrote Sound Designer too. Oh really? I wrote wow. The code for actual di digital audio. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I remember going to a studio uh, back in the '90s, or, or yeah, it had to have been the '90s, and they were running one of the um, original, like not original Mac towers, but a, a Mac tower on OS seven or eight or right. something like that, and it was so primitive, um, and the amount of render time that it took oh just God. to do certain things was was incredible I, it's amazing in t 25 years how long or how far things have come to be able to do what we're doing yeah the transition for me and for most everybody who was producing full-time at that point when the transition came yeah um was a it was a hard transition to make i mean yeah <laughs> if you're recording on two inch 24 track which just still sounds better to to and and going to the Pro Tools back then, which was slow and cumbersome and took forever to render. Yeah, you wanted to have the flow of recorded the tape. in sixteen bit and didn't sound that good anyway. It's like so what they they would be doing hybrid stuff back then. Actually, the color and the shape was the first time I'd seen it used. Oh, really? Um, um, and they were flying stuff back and forth from the tape machine to the the, the new Pro Tools. Didn't they used to call it slow tools instead of oh, pro yeah. tools? <laughs> yeah, slow tools. Someone 
And that's the first time you see stuff on a grid. And then this is where, like, the timing thing, like, oh, it's kind of not on the grid. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, Kayla asks, uh, what's something that surprised you about each other as we started working together? Oh, this is, this could be kind of cool. Don't hold back anybody. <laughs> um, it, it could be something about how we work or it could be something about anything. What I, I'm actually, I mean, I'm interested to hear, let's, let's do Blake first. What's something that surprised you about us two working with us and we'll go around. That's kind of yeah, cool. Chris was bald. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Since when? <laughs> no, honestly, like there's, there's a lot of little things that have kind of surprised me. You know, like the way that Chris works is, is a lot different than what I anticipated, you know, but he's just very kind of free flowing, which is cool. And you do get a little bit of that in his videos, but like, even outside of that, he's just really kind of, all right, let's do this, let's try this, let's do this. And you know, has just a really cool take on things. And also he loves Soundgarden so much. Yeah, yeah which <laughs> I guess I could have seen that coming, but absolutely love Soundgarden. Um, as for Barrett, you know, I didn't really know what to expect with Barrett. I'm not gonna lie. But after talking to him for a few days, you know, and just kind of, you know, shooting the shit a little bit and kind of hanging out. He's actually just way more <sighs> comfortable. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not even that, like, I mean, Barrett, you kind of said it yourself, you know, like sometimes it's, it, you feel a little like uncomfortable with it, you know, and yeah. things like that. But actually he's got a really cool personality. He's just really fun to like hang with. And like, we watched a bunch of YouTube videos last night and stuff like that, which was pretty cool. And, um, Working with him in general, I mean, the whole flow of things has been yeah, really has been a fun. Giant learning experience for me, you know. Yeah. So I'm just kind of on information overload. That's why I can't come up with too much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys go. Well, it was fun jumping around with you in the booth yesterday. That's, that's right? what that's I'm saying. Of, things like that. Part you of know? the course, we uh, we're we're literally like getting a cardio workout in front of the mic, <laughs> and Barrett, Barrett's over here, kind of going. <laughs> I hope they have enough energy to track. But real fun stuff. All yeah. right, what about, what about you? What's the something that surprised um, you about both of us? You know, I, I kind of I don't have any expectations when I meet people, so it's, yeah, um, nothing was really surprising. Your 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 teaching vocal teaching techniques were were interesting to me. I'd never <laughs> seen it. I've never seen stuff done that way. That's uh -huh. what I'm saying. Um, as I was saying, it was it seemed more like theatrical based which is kind of cool i mean yeah. it definitely works um but it was just something that was surprising to me to uh -huh. see especially like the whole the jumping around stuff that's also very theatrical but sure. i totally see the value in that and how that works it's cool um and uh you know blake is just really down to earth and cool guy so it was nice to uh thanks i appreciate that <laughs> yeah nothing really surprising yeah. Surprising is a weird word to use. I mean, <laughs> I, I try not to have expectations of, yeah, that's, of it's, anybody. It's a good thing. Well, I, I say for me, the first thing that surprised me um, was when I was on the phone with these guys, we uh, we set up a, a three way call and we're talking and how uh, how it really didn't take any convincing at all to, <laughs> to have these guys come out. It, it was like. Well, you're doing this. You're doing there. You're involved. You, you guys want to come out to here to Colorado and do it in my studio, and we'll make a course up. Sure. sure. Like Let's they're really. That. I mean, and we talked about details and stuff after that. But the, the like, the uh, the instant uh, agreement and excitement over over this was was really cool, really fun. Like, I think everybody was just in the mood for an experience. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. you guys are both YouTubers, so you you know about that stuff. I have I do have a YouTube channel, but it's very small. I don't have much time to dedicate to it yeah. we're gonna get them there um yeah. well and part of that is just you're, you're making music all the time yeah. <laughs> uh and then uh, so that was the, the both thing and and uh it's kind of funny because i blake and i had talked quite a bit before um before doing this and i've been following blake's channel he'd been following my channel so we we got to know each other um on a on a sort of surfacey level mm -hmm. um but and I don't know if this was a surprise, but just kind of a cool thing. Your um, your unwaveringly uh, positive and um, 
yeah, I, th- I think positive is that you, you have just this wonderful positive vibe and energy Thank you. that doesn't stop even <laughs> when you're trying to work on something. And yeah. I and, and even when you're, you're like you're in there and you're, you're singing the same line 900 times and Barrett and I are like, man, it's still flat or whatever, you know, and, and you're just, <laughs> there, there's no I, no frustration. No, I know that's no attitude. A really cool thing that you've. You yeah. haven't gotten overly frustrated, which is very common. Yeah. Thank Most you. people are like really hard on themselves and oh, I'm definitely hard on myself. I just kind of like I'll take it, internalize it, <laughs> work on it the next day. And I just kind of realize, you know, it's always a work in progress. You yeah. just have to yeah. keep, you know, moving forward with it. Yeah. And I will say to Chris Frederick, who just said, really, Chris? No stool for Blake. He's got a chair in there. I do. He I just do wanted to stand. You can see it in the background, right? Right there, it's the little X thing. Although my headphones might be living on that. I don't know. They're in the back there. there. He's yeah. doing vocals. So right. He got to stand. Most, when most people don't sit when they're doing vocals. Although you can. Right. Yeah. Or Christina Aguilera and lay on your back and sing. Well, famously, uh, Kurt did that too for uh, Polly. Did he really? Yeah. He sat, yeah. I sit all the time when I record vocals, but it's because I'm right right here at the desk. Yeah. But there, there's there's definitely something to be said for doing what is comfortable for the moment. If it's yeah. comfortable to lay on a couch with a guitar <laughs> and a mic hanging over you with like, right. uh, you know, that's fine. But And then what surprised me about uh, Barrett uh, was, uh, I mean, I knew, and I'd worked with, with old school producers before, and so that was part of the excitement of having you out. It's like... Well, I know what I do, and I know what you know. Uh, the new guys do. You know, I've done courses with with you know uh, Spencer Satello and and some other guy, Mark Martell and Warren Hewitt this this last year, and but uh, I was so excited to have someone that was that that did has been doing things and worked on some of my favorite albums come to my studio and show me, and it is refreshingly simple which i already i already knew intuitively that the best way to go about making great music was to not get lost in the um minutia of billions of plugins or nine million approaches so i already knew that but to see someone who has been successful for so many years and worked on so many great albums and he's still he's he hasn't even embraced all the new features and Pro Tools, um, but he's still getting great sounds and coaching the artist through getting wonderful vocals. And and so I, I don't know that that was – I think it was a little bit surprising because I, I guess I would have expected um, – I don't even know if I, if I expected it. But this, this idea that you are – you're striking this balance between using new technology – but but not getting overwhelmed with all the possibility. You use what works and just enough of what works to get the job done. Yeah, and that's um, that's kind of surprising, but refreshingly familiar and what I had hoped for, and that what I had hoped I would really glean from you. Well, let's um throw throw in a few more ideas here, and we'll, then we'll take some more yeah. more questions. And I can do that kind of muttering one if you guys. Yeah, want. let's try that. Let's try that behind it. Where are we talking about? Uh, just the same verse. Like, okay. we just try the muttering instead of the whispering and see which we like better. You reap what you sow, you know, and I'm the reaper here to tailor you. All of your woes are your own, no, no You can't be blaming everybody when you did this alone You say you... Kind of like that? I couldn't really get like a fry out of it. I would say. You reap what you sow, you know And I'm the reaper here to tailor your clothes Cause all of your woes are your own no you can't be blaming everybody when you did this alone you said so creepy (laughs) yeah could you reap what you sow you know and i'm the reaper here to tailor your clothes it's interesting it almost sounds like you're there's maybe too much pitch in there could you yeah. do yeah, a little bit yeah. more fry like that's what clothes. i was trying to do i couldn't really get the fry going your clothes you, you reap what you sow yeah you that's know. better yeah. yeah that's better you reap 
what you sow, you know. You reap what you sow, you know. And I'm the reaper here to tailor your clothes. Cause all of your woes are your own, no, no. You can't be blaming everybody when you did this alone. You say you that was a little bit easier. I took the You reap what you sow, you know. And I'm the reaper here to tailor your clothes. Cause all of your woes are your own, no, no. You can't be blaming everybody when you did this alone. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, Let's see what that sounds like with the whispering. Ooh, putting them both in? You reap what you sow, you know. And I'm the reaper here to tailor your clothes. Cause all of your woes are your own, no, no. You can't be blaming everybody when you did this alone. Yeah. That's some, yeah, yeah bring those in and out. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I like, the, I, I like the echo stuff too. Are the, play it one more time. What you sow, you know And I'm the reaper here to tailor your clothes Cause all of your woes are your own, no, no You can't be blaming everybody when you did this alone Are the, you reap what you are the high uh, thing, this high high things aren't in there Oh, that was on the second verse No, that verse. was the second verse be, Oh, wait, this is the first verse Yeah Okay The second verse too, if you want uh, Cause I did like Yeah, that'd be fun to hear the harp The hunter The huntress will chase Her prey Yeah, she'll steal another heart Just to throw it away Yeah, give it a go Okay which one do you want me to do? Either or. Um, do the whispery and echo thing. Okay. The huntress will chase her prey. Yeah, she'll steal another heart just to throw it away. She won't stay. That's her game. For God's sakes, baby, promise me I'm not just a name. You left me lit. I messed up one line there just a little bit. <laughs> Try it again. Yeah. The huntress will chase her prey. Yeah, she'll steal another heart just to throw it away. She won't stay. That's her game. For God's sakes, baby, promise me I'm not just a name. You left me living in the aftermath. Yeah. That's cool, Sad. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Nice to have the options on both. Agreed. Totally. Both ones. Um, what's your thought? Uh, a couple more questions came in here. Uh, what's your thought, Barrett, on um, overdubbing? Actually, you can both speak to this since you just did this with your <laughs> songs. Um, uh, overdubbing drums or tracking drums separately... Um, and, and not being the bed track. Have you ever done that, or do you always start with the drums when you're when you're recording a song? Uh, either or. Um, if it's a band, yeah, and they're coming in with a full song, I like to track the band, the whole band, the whole band, yeah, in with the object of getting the drums. Mm -hmm. So everything else is scratch. Everything else would be scratch, but you you want to play like everything's a keeper. Okay. And that's that's the always the ultimate goal. Just play it like the fucking Beatles did. And yeah. Everything's a keeper. Yeah. But at the same time, your ultimate goal is just to get the drums. Now, that being said, if you're to a click and you fix stuff, um, and after you track everything else to a gridded drum track, yeah. you can easily go back and re-record the drums. But... You have to have the drums right to do all the other instruments. Right. Because if, if you try to go later and the instruments are following a different rhythm, rhythm, rhythm yeah. you're, you're, you're screwed. What, how much of, of Foo Fighters stuff 
was done to a click with the stuff that Nothing. you were involved with. Nothing. Dave has no, no. never done. Really? <laughs> he did in Nirvana, didn't he? So, no. no. Well, actually, maybe they did. Because that, I, I, I think they did an they, article maybe about he that. Did do a click. That, that's right. Um, um, was, didn't they slow down um, "Smells Like Teen Spirit" or something like that? Just kept, a little bit. Yeah, I know that's right. Butch did did have him do a click because, well, I'll tell you a secret about Dave. Yeah, <laughs> he started off in punk rock hardcore bands. Right, Scream. Playing even before Scream. Oh, okay. His, his first two bands, Mission Impossible and Freak Baby, that I also recorded, uh-huh. were really fast. Scream was kind of more of a metal punk band, and uh, Mission Impossible, the band before that, was really fast. Um, and he, as you know, like a 16-year-old, was the fastest drummer I'd ever seen in my life. Wow. Um but anyway, he was, you know, his tempo was not that great back then. And uh-huh. it wasn't really until he joined Nirvana where he just started playing really simple for him, totally simple, straight forward beats that his timing got really good. Okay. And so by the time the Foo Fighters came around, he pretty much has perfect time. Like, he doesn't need a click track. Yeah. In fact, it's probably better that he doesn't because um, he can set the pocket and groove. And really. So... The way we did the first record, which was done in five days, mm-hmm. we did the whole thing. He played every instrument on that first record in five days. He would do a drum track with singing the song in his head. <laughs> first take, uh-huh. he would come in to the control room and put down a couple guitars, throw on a bass, and then move on to the next song. And then so nuts. we you know- tracked all... We tracked 15 songs in in three days, and then used a day for vocals. Uh huh. At the end. Ah, that's so nuts. I got kind of a question for you about that. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, do you think that, considering they do that, because I had no idea, do you think that doing things to a metronome is almost kind of like the same thing with you know with auto tune and stuff like that? Like it no. almost takes something away. No. Okay. No, I think it's very good to have a have quick, a metronome. A <laughs> even even if it's just you don't have to be like totally on it but if you know where it is and you yeah. feel like you're with it because if you're a good enough drummer too you're going to be able to play and push and pull yeah. with that as well so yeah fair huh just kind of curious yeah it, it's it's just so funny because i i have a sneaking suspicion that a lot of the albums that i i like um were not recorded to a click. Um, and, and sometimes I have that suspicion and I'll go back and I'll, uh, I mean, even in Pro Tools, you can, you can grid things. You can, you know, record a two track of one of your favorite songs in and right. try to, try to grid things. Yeah. And to my, uh, dismay sometimes I'm like, that wasn't recorded to a click. <laughs> it's like, it's so steady and such an awesome groove, but now that I think about it, it does kind of speed up a little a bit. A lot of it. No, the... yeah, a lot of a lot of bands would do that, like speed up a little bit in the chorus, and yeah, you know, it, it, bands when they play together have the natural mm-hmm. ability to to ebb and flow, and there's nothing wrong with that, yeah. either way. Yeah, yeah. Great question. Uh, let's see any other? Here's the link to the. Uh... The course waiting list again. If you guys know, it's you know the joining the waiting list is free, and we're also releasing a free course, um, basically vocal production setup um, that includes how to warm up for singing in the studio. Uh, it includes basic signal chain uh, suggestions and walkthroughs, and so if you join that free course, you'll be well poised to take in the full course. Um, yeah, I would agree. Programming drums is no fun. I would always rather have a real drummer. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm. thankfully my son's a, a budding drummer, so I'll be able to use him for the rest of my life. Don't have to program another drum track again. Thank God. So happy Soul about sucking. that. <laughs> it is. Uh, let's see. Humbucker Chronicles. Do you think that the hybrid approach, analog as much as possible, promotes better f- musicianship and performance because the safety net of fixing in post doesn't exist? Yes. Um, well, yes and, <laughs> and no. I mean, the way the way things used to get done, you had to get it had right. Had to get it right. You had to, or I you're mean, cutting tape. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was punching in with tape, but yeah. it was 
you tried not to do it and it was you know my tape my 24 track tape machine the punch in was not very good so you <laughs> you had to have a gap you couldn't just like punch in in the middle of somewhere or yeah. else you'd see a little dropout um so basically yeah you had to you had to fucking play it and you had to play it right and or accept what you could do um my bulk of my time now when i work with people is fixing stuff mm. and it's it's not very fun to have to fix stuff. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> um, get it right in the tracking process. Yeah. yeah. But that, there's budget aspects of that too, right? Like if you're, I suppose they have to pay you either way to, to spend hours fixing a, uh, something or, yeah. or spending time in the studio tracking. So I suppose you could structure your, your billing in such a way that like, it's more to fix it. You know, auto tuning is $7 million an, <laughs> album, an hour, but singing it right is only, you know, you could probably. Yeah. So let's see. I, I do I do miss the days when I'm working with working with bands that have, have their shit have their shit together. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh well guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um thank you guys for being here yeah, and absolutely. Um we're going cool. to uh we're gonna continue the journey here. We're gonna track another song today, we're gonna finish up this song and uh add more insights to the course um here's this link one more time uh if you want to join the waiting list and we'll see you guys very very soon cool